Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, I really treat it as a honor uh, because it shows uh, that uh, this uh, cooperation that we have between the public authorities which are dealing with the data protection, with the privacy protection, and uh, the protection of other fundamental rights, uh, and the civic society is still alive uh, and is the extremely important part uh, of what we do. And this is actually something which I want to say about uh, and uh, maybe taking one of the examples of this kind of uh, cooperation. Well, uh, unlike uh, Sophie, I didn't come to uh, this place uh, because of my political career in the political party. I always thought myself being neutral, meaning I have my political opinions, but they don't count to what I do because uh, I thought I'm neutral, I'm taught I'm non-political, not apolitical, but non-political. And I thought that I know quite a lot. Uh, when I started my work in the public administration in 2006, I already had uh, seven years of uh, experience in the private business. I actually started my work, although I'm a lawyer by, by education, and I did my PhD in constitutional law, I started my professional work in the IT company, and I actually started as a data miner. Uh, my job was to find the public resources uh, that are available and to create out of them the information retrieval system that would enable lawyers and uh, public administration, but also any kind of companies, uh, to profile the clients, to profile the customers, to profile those they wanted to do the contracts with. Later on, I moved uh, to uh, work in academia in the field of the IT law. But when I started my job in 2006 in the public administration, I started in the Ministry of Interior. And I was the advisor of the Minister of Interior. And later on, the head of the Department of E-Government in my country of origin in the Ministry of Interior, responsible for interoperability of the resources. And that was the moment at which I met uh, the NGOs dealing with the privacy. As you know, in my country of origin, there is a strong uh, NGO dealing with it, which is Panopticon, also the member of EDRI. And uh, actually, that was Panopticon who started to ask me the questions that I always should ask myself, but I never did. And I thought that I'm prof pretending, uh, that I'm uh, protecting something uh, which is important for me, which is, of course, the data flow, but also the security, and security also understood as the security against crimes. And being in the Ministry of Interior, I was always in favor of having a strong uh, law enforcement uh, authorities in my country because I wanted them to, pr to protect me. But at the same time, I still had in the back of my mind the thing which happened in 1983. In 1983, I was 12 years old. And that was the time when there was a martial law in my country of origin, just after the patch by the communist, uh, uh, by the communist, uh, let's say, veton part of the uh, party. And we had the visit of the policeman in my school, in my primary school. And he was talking with the children of my age, being 12, 11, 13. And he was explaining how the world is organized, how the police is organized. Uh, and he touched the point which stayed in my mind for years. He said, don't be surprised that we surveil the people. Don't be surprised that during the martial law, we are listening to the public communication and to the telephone communication, that we read your, e your mails, snail mails. You should not be afraid of that because we are not looking for the people like you. We are looking for the bad people. <laughs> and... Uh, we are only interested in bad people. And then to my 12 years old mind came the question, but who is a bad person? And who decides who is the bad person? And then there was a time when somebody explained to me, yeah, it is decided in the law. And I could understand with my 12 years old mind that I'm not in the democratic country. And these people who are dealing with uh, my security over the bad people are not necessarily the ones that I would like to see there. So when Panopticon started to ask me the questions that I should ask myself being the public uh, 
uh, the public uh, um, officer, I started to think, okay, probably these are the things that I have to remember day after day and remind myself day after day. Later on, when I, when I applied for the job of the Data Protection Authority, I've been questioned by the NGOs. There is a good tradition in my country of origin that the candidate for the DPA it has the monitoring process done by the NGOs. I had three hours of uh, hard question and answer time with the NGOs, and it was finished with a kind of summary that was sent to the public, which, by which among the other things said, okay, this candidate is probably professionally well, but it seems to be surprising that somebody who had uh, who was the high officer in the Ministry of Interior is going to pretend right now that he will be defending human rights. And it stayed in my mind as well that I'm the one to show what is the real uh, job of the public authority, what is the real job of the controlling power. I'm not the member of the NGO dealing with privacy. And there are many situations in which also as the European Data Protection Supervisor, I have different point of view than the people who are dealing with it. But there are a lot of places, a lot of moments, uh, when we are on the same side and we are saying the same things. But first of all, I think uh, this is an education process. This is Joe, this is Anna, this is Sierra who is here, who are teaching me how to understand the things which are going on around, even if my, in my humble opinion, I was well prepared for that. So what do I know? Can I prove what I know about what's going on in my country? How can I show that the Data Protection Authority really can do his work? In 2012, at the beginning of the discussion about GDPR and the directive and the so-called police directive, uh, there was an interparliamentary meeting in the European Parliament uh, where there were the members of the European Parliament and the members of the national parliaments. And uh, I had an opportunity to, to take part in the panel which was dealing with the directive on police and law enforcement authorities. And being assured by some of the members of the panel that everything is under control and there was a good supervision, power, the good supervision system in the EU countries, I actually openly asked them, do you think so? I'm probably, I, I can probably Im imagine that there is something like that in France, maybe in the UK, maybe in the Netherlands. I can say it because I don't know, and you tell me. But I can tell you one, it's not in my country. Because I, as a data protection authority, have no clue what the secret services do with the data. And I have very few information on what the police does. After that, it was well shown that this is not the problem of my country of origin only. But I said to these people, if you think that you know what's going on in 28 countries of the European Union, you are wrong and I assure you that. And if you want to have uh, the real, well-working uh, law enforcement authorities in your countries, and I do want it, then you need the supervision on that. Not necessarily by the Data Protection Authority, but there has to be a supervision. Supervision uh, is the condition sine qua non for giving the big data analytic tools uh, and all kind of other analytics uh, to the law enforcement authorities. But if so, we have to decide who should supervise, how should supervise, what does it mean, the supervision? And I'm very happy that we have a directive right now I'm very happy that the European Parliament decided uh, to force the other legislators uh, to have the package consisting of GDPR that everybody wanted to have uh, and the police directive. But I really try to observe right now how the implementation of the process looks like. Uh, and I'm afraid that my speech from this conference in 2012 is still absolutely valid and still should be there. So we don't need to agree in 100% with the NGOs. We don't need uh, to pretend uh, that we do the same things. No, but definitely we need, uh, 
as data protection authorities to be open on the NGOs and to be open to learn from you how the world really looks like. And in my opinion, ADRI has uh, one big advantage over any other association, federation that exists right now in Europe. And this is the fact that it's present in so many countries with so different members. And you, have you, you can use uh, the power of the synergy where one of you is helping the others to understand the things uh, and to create the front uh, that sometimes is visible in this side, sometimes in the other side, sometimes in the, uh, the, this dossier or the other dossier. And that was the success of this 15 years uh, of ADRI. And I would love to have ADRI and the other platforms like that uh, present. And I can tell you that uh, many of the data protection authorities uh, share this point of view. And they want also the NGOs, the civic society, to be present uh, at all the international events uh, that the data protection authorities and the privacy authorities organize. And uh, just half a year before the International Conference of Data Protection Commissioners uh, and, data pr and Privacy Commissioners, which is going to be organized here in Brussels in October this year, I would like to tell you that as it was when I organized this conference in Warsaw in 2013, uh, that today it's also the big part of our program. Unfortunately, uh, after 2013, uh, Public Voice never met at the uh, international conference for different reasons, partly political, partly organizational. But we are sure that 2018 will be the time when this practical cooperation that is us learning from you and you hearing what we see in this top the of top of the iceberg uh, that we are supervising uh, uh, is still um, uh, present and is still developed. Thank you very much and I hope you will have a good time today and I hope you will have a time to discuss for a while about the practical implication of cooperation with different kind of uh, public authorities, uh, including those uh, who are created in order to defend uh, the human rights and the fundamental rights here in Europe. Thank you.